Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper. I'm back after a retreat location this weekend and I'm lucky enough to have the cameraman tonight. Tonight's video, I'm going to introduce a new piece of test equipment here on the channel, a new tool in the Comms Prepper toolbox, and that's the companion tracking generator, the USB TG44 Alpha that works with Signal Hounds, Spectrum Analyzer, the USB SA44B. I have the USB SA44B here. Next to it is the USB TG44 Alpha. You'll notice there is a BNC connector that couples these two devices together so they'll work in tandem. They're both powered by a USB cable, which I have connected to the laptop right now. There's a lot of things you can do with a spectrum analyzer tracking generator combination, and we're going to do a lot more videos now that I have these two devices here. But with tonight's video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can look at the residence of two antennas. Here at the retreat location I have DPD Productions GMRS base station antenna and I have a 2 meter 70 centimeter base station antenna that I run on the packet radio network. Now I don't recall who made the 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna but we're going to use the SA44B spectrum analyzer and the TG44 alpha tracking generator with the spike software to send power from the tracking generator, because that's what this is, this is a signal generator, out to the antenna, and whatever is reflected back will be received by the spectrum analyzer and displayed in the spike software. In order to do this test, I'm also going to have to use a directional coupler. So I have a small mini circuits directional coupler here. It's a ZFDC-10-5, 1 megahertz to 2 gig, which falls within the operational range of our antenna, so we got the right directional coupler. I'm also using a 20 dB attenuator here on the output of the tracking generator to make sure the tracking generator sees a consistent 50 ohm load. It's not necessary, but it's a good practice to have an attenuator on the output of the tracking generator. So with the magic of editing, I'm going to insert a schematic of the directional coupler and this configuration here on the bench because this is a little bit confusing to show you what we're doing. So how this test will work is I will go ahead and calibrate this configuration as is. And when the time comes, I will go ahead and connect the directional coupler to the antenna port up here. This is the cable coming down. First antenna we're going to do is DPD Productions GMRS base station antenna. So we'll calibrate not connected. Once it's calibrated I'll connect to the antenna and we'll actually see the results coming back from the software. So let me get the spike software set up and we'll show you how this works. Alright guys, I got the desktop capture software running and what you're looking at here is Signal Hound spike software. We're looking at the spectrum analyzer mode we're sweeping from the start to the finish. The lower left hand corner is the start 100 kilohertz to 4.4 gigahertz. What I'm going to do is change the span to more closely align with the advertised specification of DPD Productions GMRS base station antenna. So I want to start my sweep. We're going to put 400 megahertz in. I want to stop my sweep at 500 megahertz and this will definitely cover the entire FRS and GMRS band, the assigned frequencies which typically fall between 462 to 468. Right now you're looking at the spectrum analyzer mode so we're going to come up to analysis mode and change this to scalar network analysis. So the first thing you want to do is adjust your reference level over here in the lower right hand corner to make sure you can see the trace. Again the directional coupler is not connected to the antenna right now. In other manufacturers of tracking generators and spectrum analyzers, they may call this feature the normalize feature or the calibrate feature. With Signal Hound, it's called store through. So we're going to hit the store through button, and that's going to give us a flat line on 0 dB. Let's make sure we can get this line in play. There's the line. We're going to hit store through again because I changed my reference level. So here we have 0 dB, a flat line, neg 10, neg 30, etc. Now what I'm going to do is connect the directional coupler to the antenna and you're going to see power coming out of the tracking generator going down to the antenna and what's reflected back is going to reflect on the screen. The absence of reflected power means that the antenna is keeping that power. So you're going to see a null or a dip where the antenna is most resident and that's what you're looking for in a good quality antenna. Sending power to the antenna and the antenna keeping it and sending it out into free space so you can communicate. 
you don't want the power coming back. So that's going to be represented here with a dip. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the directional coupler to the antenna and you'll see the plot show up on the screen. And there we have our plot. I'm going to put a marker on here now. We'll put marker 1, trace 1, peak search. There's our marker. And this antenna is most resonant or tuned for 462 megahertz. That's the bottom of that null. So if you look to the left hand side here, we're sending power to the antenna and it's coming back. As we get closer to the operational frequencies of this antenna, less power is coming back because the antenna is accepting it and keeping it. Until we get to the most resonant point here at the bottom of this dip, and now we know where this antenna is most resonant at. Then we'll work up the other side as you get higher frequency. The antenna becomes less resonant until you wouldn't want to operate with it. Now there's a way to set this up where you can do deltas. That's the measurement between two markers and calculate the dB difference between these lines and convert that into voltage standing wave ratio. But SignalHound thought of this and they've actually included this in the Spike software. So I'm going to come over here and check this box, plot VSWR. And now it drops everything down to the other screen here. And now this is our plot. The peaks are now the most reflective power and the nulls are the least reflective power. The bottom line represents an SWR of 1 to 1. That's a perfect antenna. That's what everybody strives for when they're making an antenna or trimming an antenna. But to get that perfect antenna to match across a wide spectrum of frequencies is very difficult to achieve. That's a lot of bandwidth to hope for. But this antenna does quite well for what it's designed for and what it's sold for. The second line here is the VSWR line for 2 to 1. Industry standards say anything at 2 to 1 or below is a good operational antenna. Anything above 2 to 1 you don't want to operate on. So we'll go over here to the left to the first frequency where we dip below 2 to 1 where it becomes operationally acceptable and that marker shows that this antenna can start being used at 442 megahertz. I'm going to drop a second marker on here, marker 2, trace 1, we'll do peak search, and I'll drag it through. So we're good to operate all through here, coming back up to the other side, now the antenna is becoming less resonant, and here's the 2 to 1 line. So between 442 megahertz and 480 megahertz, this antenna is resonant and safe to use with your radio equipment. Two big thumbs up for DPD Productions, this is an excellent antenna. The GMRS band actually starts at 462, so we'll go ahead and pull this along. I'm dragging the wrong marker, sorry about that. So we're going to drag marker 1 to 462. Okay, 461 is good. And I'll grab marker 2, and we'll go to 468. And there's 468. That is a great SWR. Between the Diamond 1 marker and the Diamond 2 marker, that represents the FRS GMRS operational frequencies. And that antenna, the DPD Productions GMRS base station antenna, has an exceptional VSWR for its advertised operational frequencies. So we're going to pause here, disconnect the directional coupler. I'm going to disconnect the VHF antenna from the back of the packet radio, and we'll see how that antenna looks. Alright guys, before I roll over to the 2 meter antenna that I use on the packet radio setup here, I wanted to show you this directional coupler setup. This is a mini circuits directional coupler. I'll put a link down below. This specific model is good for 1 megahertz all the way up to 2 gig. Again, that falls within our operational range that we do here on the Comms Prepper channel with a primary focus on GMRS and amateur radio communications. The power coming out of the tracking generator, this is a signal being generated sent to the antenna for the test comes up through the cable here and enters the out port. Now this may seem confusing, but this test is being performed from the perspective of what's coming back from the antenna. So we're sending power into the out port, which is going through the directional coupler, to the in port, up to the antenna. Where the antenna is not resident and where reflected power or VSWR is created, that energy is going to come back down the coax, into the in port, and then get coupled to the coupled port and sent down to the spectrum analyzer. So what we're doing here is we're emulating a transmitter, sending power out to the antenna, where the antenna is resonant or falls within its operational frequency span, 
that antenna will keep that power. And that's why you see that null or that dip in the spike software. That's energy going to the antenna that the antenna is accepting and saying, yes, this is my operational frequency span. The energy for the frequencies that fall outside the operational characteristics are going to come back down the coax into the directional coupler, through the couple port, into the spectrum analyzer, and that's where you see those high flat lines. This is power coming back. So when you first start this test, you want to put your frequency span in. It's typically a little above and a little below of what the antenna is designed for. In the case of the last example, I did 400 to 500 megahertz. Get your directional coupler set up, and then you want to do the store through feature, which calibrates it. That gives you a flat line with the directional coupler in play in the circuit at 0 dB. Then you connect the antenna, and you actually start seeing the return power. So we'll pause here. I'm going to roll over once again to the Spike software and the desktop capturing software. And then we're going to shoot this antenna here. This is the 2 meter antenna that I have the ASU FT2600M connected to. We'll be right back. Alright guys, I reset or did the preset here on the Spike software. We're going to go back into Scalar Network Analysis. I'm going to put in my operational range for this antenna that we're checking. So this is 2 meter amateur radio, so I'm going to put 140 megahertz for the start. And we'll stop at 150 megahertz, because that gives us a nice slice of where the 2 meter amateur radio band falls. We're going to go ahead and adjust our reference level here, bring our line down so we have our 0 dB line on the screen. We're going to go ahead and calibrate, or normalize, and in the case of spike, we're going to do store through. So we have a flat line at 0 dB, we're calibrated, we're sweeping starting at 140 to 150, 2 meter amateur radio is 144 to 148. Let's hook up the antenna and see how it does. And there we have our sweep. Now I am getting a spur over here of the spike, but I think this is environmental up here at the retreat location. Could be my off-grid solar power, could be something being picked up by the antenna. But it's not affecting the outcome of this test here. We still see where the antenna is resident, where reflected power is coming back to the spectrum analyzer, and where power is being absorbed by the antenna. I'm going to put a marker in and see where this antenna is most resident. So we'll do peak search. Of course, it hit that spike there. And we're going to go down to the bottom of this null. And this antenna is most resonant at 144.4 megahertz. So that's the bottom end of the 2 meter amateur radio band. So this antenna is actually maybe a little bit too long. You could probably shorten this up and move this null a little bit higher, more in the center of the 2 meter amateur radio band. But this is definitely acceptable to operate on. We'll go ahead and plot the SWR and find out where this antenna is really resonant. Again, the bottom line is your SWR line of 1 to 1. The second line here is 2 to 1. So we'll bring marker 1 up to the 2 to 1 line, which is right where that spur is starting right there. That's 140 megahertz. So at 140 megahertz, this antenna becomes operationally acceptable based on industry standards and what you'll find in most of your ham radio manuals. We're going to throw in a second marker and see what the top end of this antenna is. Trace 1. Peak search, and we'll bring it down over here to the 2 to 1 line. And this antenna stops being operationally acceptable at 148 megahertz. So looking at this antenna, to me it's too long. If I shorten this up a little bit, this inverted bell curve or this dip would move a little bit to the right and we could center this antenna around 146 megahertz. And that's probably what I should do, but I don't feel like climbing on the shed. So I'm going to call it good. It's good enough for me. I operate the Darren network out here, which is 145.690. So let's see if we can find that frequency. 145.700, 145.690. So right around here is where I operate the packet radio. So this is 1 to 1. This is 2 to 1. I'm going to say it's probably around 1.4 to 1, which is very acceptable based on industry standards and what's specified my amateur radio manual for this radio. So that was my long-winded video introducing the newest tool to the Comms Prepper Test Equipment Toolbox, the Companion Tracking Generator by Signal Hound for the USB SA44B Spectrum Analyzer. We're going to see this again here in the channel. There's a whole lot of things you can do with this. We can tune cavities, tune duplexers, check filters, and I'm really glad to have it here in the channel and have the opportunity to share it with you guys. 
And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper with my cameraman helper here. Introducing Signal Hounds USB TG44 Alpha tracking generator. Thanks for watching, guys.